So we will now go on to the last paper in this session before our business meeting. And we have um, a paper with three authors. So um, Michel Nguesson, who has been here before, we were just talking with him, Hasiatu Abu Bakari, and um, Michael Akipelu, Akimpelu, sorry. Um, uh, Dr. Abu Bakari is a senior research fellow at the Institute of African Studies, University of Ghana. Her research interests span areas including grammars of minority Mabia languages of Ghana, syntax, information structure, sociolinguistics, onomastics, popular culture, and folk tales. And Dr. Michael Akinpalu is an associate professor at the University of Regina in Canada. His research interests include applied linguistics, language planning, and policy in multilingual contexts, vitality of minority languages, and immigration. And their paper is entitled, Names of God and Divinities in African Languages and the Myth of Polytheism. So I'm going to lead the presentation that uh, I prepared with my colleagues, Asiatu Abubakari and uh, Michael Akinpelu. The topic is about names of God and divinities in African languages and the myth of polytheism. The point is that uh, at the end of the 19th century, European came and partitioned the African continent and they colonized it. In that process, Europeans assigned themselves a civilizing mission. And that has an impact on African cultures, African politics, and everything on the continent. We're going to focus here on the religious part. So the outline of the presentation, we give a background, the historical context of the European civilizing mission on the African continent. And we present names of gods in selected African languages, including the Bauli language in the Ivory Coast, the Kusal language in Ghana, and the Yoruba language in uh, Nigeria and Benin. We follow up with the a discussion before we reach the conclusion of our paper. So, as I said, European colonization of the African continent started in the second, in the last quarter of the 19th century, and it lasted through the 1960s. They came to Africa primarily for political and economic reasons. The main colonizing powers of that time were Great Britain, France, Germany, Spain, and Italy. The paper analyzes the cultural impact of European colonization on the African continent with a focus on religious onomastics. As I said, in the 19th century, for economic reasons, European decided to come to Africa. Before that, with several European countries were present along the coast and sometimes occupying major portions of land on the African continent. That was the case for France in, in Senegal and that French, French presence in Senegal started in the, seven, in the 18th century. At the Berlin Conference in 1884 and 1885, conference convened by Otto uh, von Bismarck, the first uh, chancellor of Germany, that's when they decided they took a map of the continent and this, they decided how they are going to partition the continent and who is going to occupy each piece of the continent. And the purpose was that for, it, it was to have sphere of influence for control and economic exploitation. <clears throat> so Political, economic, and military colonization of the continent came along with cultural domination. The self-sustained mission of the European at that time was uh, a civilizing mission. Africans were not civilized, and the mission of Europeans was to partition the land and bring civilization to them. And during that, uh, during that time, African religious systems were particularly under attack, discredited, 
demonize, to prepare the ground for a religious assimilation of Africans into Christianity. To this end, African religious systems and Africans themselves were declared polytheist, worshiping a multitude of God. Proper analysis from field data indicate that uh, the concept of polytheism does not apply in the African context. That's what we're going to demonstrate here. So in, to this end, we present the concept of God and other concepts in the religious sphere to demonstrate uh, the situation uh, and the African understanding of God and uh, the religious universe. Here, we are presenting here, I'm presenting here the, uh, the Baule society in the African, in the Ivory Coast. In the system of belief of the Baule people, there is a creator, there is a God that is unique. That is the creator. The name is Nyamie, as we see there. There is no other being or, or uh, any other reality that corresponds to Nyamie or that comes close to Nyamie. Is the creator. Different epithets used in the language indicate the unique nature and the superiority of Nyamie as the creator of the world. So Nyamie is called with the, the epithet Nana, which is a term of respect utmost respect uh, that we use when each time we are referring to God. And then you have the term Nyamir Kli. Kli is the expression of absolute superlative, the greatest, the almighty. We cannot apply that to anything else in the language. And then, then we have the concept Anangama, which express the concept of eternity, the natural origin of everything, the almighty, the thing that is beyond human comprehension, it's also the, the thing that has no end, no beginning and no end. And then we have the, the term asasi, which, ref, which literally means who, the being, the person who knows everything and the person who is ever present. You have also the concept of alulua, actually is, is, it covers the same concept as nyamie. It's, it's the concept of eternity is the concept of the natural source of everything. And then we have Mie, which is a, 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 the concept that refer to the Lord, the eternal ruler, ruler, the almighty. And then we have the concept that I have at the end here, Olafima, which means literally the one who never sleeps, the one who is watching over the world at all time, the one who is ever present. And this, Epithets here that I've listed on this page apply only to Nyamie, the creator. It doesn't apply to any other element in the universe of belief of the Bauri people. Now, when we move away from Nyamie to other things that Europeans call gods, we will see the difference. So in European literature, they use God with a, a, a capital G for the creator, and they use God with the lowercase g to refer to different divinities or deities that Africans have. Those divinities in the, uh, in the Bible language are called Amwe. And as you can see here, there's a distinct word to refer to uh, uh, the creator, and another word to refer, is a, which is a common term to refer to different deities that we have in the language. The deities in our Bible system are intermediaries and they draw the divine essence from Nyamie, uh, which is the source of divinity. They do not compare to Nyamie and do, do cannot and do not exist on their own. They are portion of Nyamie with the presence on earth. We have different ones that I mentioned here. Asia is the divine essence of the earth, the physical earth that we live on, the, the, the physical earth that is the support, the material support of life. This belief system believes that if God created the earth, because God created this earth, there is a divine essence in the earth. That is a, a dimension of the source of divinity itself, that is God. And then we have the Asia also, 
which refers to different divine essences in nature, like in the forest, in the savannah, and other major elements. In mountains, in rivers, and uh, anything that is, expressed, is a, a big expression of the presence of God, the creator, because whatever exists has behind it the creator, and whoever is the creator is present in that creation. Just like when you see a piece of art, you recognize, if you are an art specialist, you recognize a different, uh, the, the, the presence of the artist in that uh, piece of, pieces of art. If you have a lot of them, you recognize, this is a Picasso style, this is uh, this other style or whatever, it, whoever is the creator of that art. You have Umye, which is the ancestral spirit. The belief is that we are the product of our ancestors. And the ancestors, once they are no longer with us, they went back to the spiritual source. As such, mm, they will make the case for us, mm, for God. So we worship them, we do our prayers, we send our prayers to them with the hope that because they join the spiritual world, they will send it to God. And that Oka here is this, uh, the divinity, the divine essence in the mountain. You have Tunzwe referring to the divine essence in fire, blacksmithing, and war. And you have Ajanu, which is the divinity of femininity, motherhood, and fertility. And Ajanu is a very powerful divinity in the Bauli tradition because each time that the nation is in danger, like in cases of war or in the case of natural, natural calamities, this is the first divinity that we invoke because we believe that uh, the, uh, uh, the woman being the creator of life, the woman is the first person who will protect life. And when a great occasion, when we invoke that, is done by women, only women, the source of creation of human beings on earth. Now, moving away from the Bauli, we also present evidence from the Kusal language. It's a, it's a group in Northern Ghana. And they also have a name, a unique name for God, the creator. That's Nahwin, as you see here. There's no other being that compared to that, just like in the Bible. And there are a lot of uh, other evidence that refer to God, the creator, that cannot refer to anything else in the language that they do not compare to any other divinity. And as you can see, the list here that, I've, uh, um, that is presenting on the page, like, like uh, you see, Gandaung referring to the almighty in one of the dialects of the language. And then uh, on uh, uh, the same terms on the other, the other uh, there are two main dialects in this language. In the other language, they use uh, Paranyaung here. And uh, you have these other epithets listed here, one meaning the king of the heaven on and earth. You have the other one me meaning the overlord. Then you have this one meaning all powerful. Then you have this one here meaning God of the old, God of gods. That is here in uh, actually is um, in, in the it will be a European concept. Uh, we would say God of divinities. The one who rules over all spirits. Again, the Kusan language has a different concept for all the other divinities that, that do not come close to God and who are ex in, in, dimensions of God on earth, intermediaries between God, between human beings and God. So you have, you have, you have the Tengbana here. The, so the, the common term for these divinities is wind, as you can see here. And then we have mentioned different divinities here. Like you have uh, the, the, the Tengbana is uh, intermediary, refer to intermediaries that draw the divine essence from God the creator and do not compare to him. You have the Yaba here referring to the divinity the, of the ancestors, the ancestral uh, spirit. 
And then we have the Mba Win, referring to family spirit protectors of the extended family. And then we have the Um Win, referring to personal spirit protector of individuals. So there is a parallel between the Baule tradition and the Kusal tradition, as you see. There is a, the creator on one side, and then you have the divinities on the other side, two different worlds, two different type of uh, beings. When you come to the Yoruba, you have the same situation. You have God, the creator, uh, that uh, is named here, Oludum Omari, the supreme creator, the one who is absolutely perfect. And epithets that refer to the creator are listed here, Olorun, meaning king of the heaven, the owner, the lord of the heaven, the ruler of heaven. And then you have Oluwa, meaning the lord. You have Oluf, uh, Olufin Orun, meaning the ruler, the judge of the heaven. And then you have Eleda, meaning the creator. You have different divinities in the Yoruba tradition. These divinities are called Orisha. The Orisha do not, once again, compare to God, but they do have the responsibility of carrying out God's will and ensuring the smooth to smooth ruling, ruling of the universe. They are, you, they are human, earthly intermediaries of God. And some of the popular ones in the Yoruba tradition are, are Esu, the Orisha for crossroads, opportunity, and new beginnings. We have the Sango, the Orisha for uh, lightning, fire, war, and virility. We have Osun, the female Orisha of love, fertility, and mm, mother of rivers. And uh, you have uh, Ogun, is the Orisha of iron, labor, and war, usually associated with metal and weaponry. And we have these other ones listed here. So this is a comparative table. And as you see, we use def we are using different cultures from different three different countries, but there is a parallel. There is a, you have the list of languages here, the Baule, the Kusan, and the Yoruba. And then when we, we're talking about names of gods and uh, it's uh, and epithets referring to God, you have the you have Nyamia here for the Baule, and you have uh, different attributes, epithets that refer to God on this side. And then when you come to the Kusa, you have the Nawin on one side and the different uh, attributes, epithets that refer to God. And then for the Yoruba, you have the, the Olodumare and then the different uh, Orsas on this side. As you can see, there is literally a parallel between the three cultures and the concept, the, the different epithets that refers, refers to God are more or less the same. And then when we move on the other side, where we talk about uh, the, the divinities, you see that uh, there is a parallel between the three languages. Typically, they refer to the same kind of divinities, divinities in major element in nature, like uh, mountains, rivers, uh, forests, the earth, and the ancestral uh, divinity. You have that in all three of them. They don't live in the same place, so we cannot say there is a direct influence of the Bauli on the, on, on the Yoruba or of the Yoruba on the Kusan. Then when we move further down, we checked names of God in other African languages. We found names of God in all African languages, almost all African languages. We are presenting a, sample, presenting a sample here. As you can see, all African languages as a name, a distinct name for God, the creator. That cannot be confused with anything else. We have different names from different countries here, including Cameroon, Mali, Kenya, uh, Angola, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Congo, Lesotho, Botswana, Tanzania, South Africa. Then when we move further down, we presented, we chose to present another language with all the details, including the names of God and the names of div divinities. In the Dinka language of South Africa, in South Sudan, you have the name of God here, the creator. 
which is in, in Hialik, the creator. And then beyond that, you have the divinities are called Jok. Then you have the list of some of the divinities here, divinity of wind, divinity of rain and, and water, divinity of femininity. And uh, so typically, so there's also a parallel between what is presented here, presented here with the Dinka and what we presented in details within the three languages that we considered initially. So Africans clearly have the concept of God, a name for God, the creator in their language. When the time came for European to translate the Bible into African languages, nobody had a problem finding a name for God because that concept that is equivalent to the Christian God, the creator, it's already existed. And for the purpose of the Bible translation, nobody had to select a name among competing names for God in any of the African culture. Therefore, the concept of polytheism applied in the African context in bad faith by Europeans is just a myth. So evidence clearly support, evidence from the field, from all African cultures, clearly indicate the existence of, of one God, the creator, with a specific distinct name and attributes. Evidence indicate the existence of divinities with distinct name, distinct functions. The divinities are emanation of God, the creator, that represent God on earth. So polytheism as applied to African cultures by European in the colonial context is a myth to justify the civilizing mission. There's no ambiguity or confusion in the mind of any African in the traditional context about God, the creator. There's no ambiguity between the name of God and the name of the divinities because we don't use the same, the same word with capital letter and uh, uh, lowercase letter. Polytheism that some religion consider as their property is a universal concept, at least on the African continent. So it was used, polytheism was used in the African context only for the purpose of discrediting Africans, African culture, and justifying the colonial enterprise. Thank you. Thank you, that was fascinating and so much data. Um, I see we have questions already in the chat. So uh, from Beth, first of all, she says, are there plans to create a database or corpus of the monotheistic names of God for all African languages or does one already exist? Not, not, there's not a complete thing. You'll find pieces in different places and uh, like you, you'll find books on Yoruba religious systems with the details, and then you'll find books on the Dinka with the details, and then you find books on the Zulu and the details, but you don't have a comprehensive type of thing. So it, it's a good idea, it's something that we would think mm -hmm. of. Okay. And then we have uh, another question. Mm -hmm. um, Evangeline says, please explain the difference between the deities and divinities and minor gods. Uh, amongst the Igbo I don't I, I refute the concept of minor God okay. because the, as I said there's no nothing else called God in African language just except the uh, uh, except the creator so using minor God is completely relevant we have God and we have, we have the divinities you can call them de deities or you can call, call them de de divinities but I don't want us to use the concept of minor God because there's no other God except the Creator. We have divinities that represent uh, different spirit 
which are the emanation of God the source with presence on earth, serving as intermediaries between human beings and God the creator. Yeah. And Michael, if I may add to that question uh, on divinities. So mm -hmm. assuming there is a problem in the family, for instance, and people want to consult or sort of get the perspective or get some kind of divine intervention, then visitations are made to the deities or the shrines where consultations are made and then they propose this and this and this is the cause for this disease and so you may have to sort of heal it this way or the other way. So it's more of you getting information of what God wants you to do, the sacrifices you are supposed to do through these divinities or through these shrines. So the concept of minor gods are actually sort of, I don't know how to say it, but just as Michael has put it. So these are this is the role that the divinities play in one way or the other. They are places that people consult and they are places that offer advice or suggestions on, on maybe an impending calamity or a problem that the family is facing and trying to give you ways to solve that. So I think that that, that is exactly what, what happens in this concept. And more of when uh, religiously, let's say I'm a Muslim, for instance, where one would say that through God, uh, God communicated to human beings through the prophets, then it is the same way where it is believed that people communicate or God communicates to people through the divine sources or through the shrines and through these other areas or, or sources of divinity. So that that I think is the distinction that is that, that is there. Yeah, and if we want to look at the European religious system, Christianity, with the same lenses that we use, they used to look at Africans' uh, religion, we will also see say that Christianity is a polytheist religion because you have that supreme God, and then they have Mary, then then they have the saints, then have, they have all the everything holy in the system, but Mary is not a, a separate God. And this, the saints are not separate God. And everything that is holy there is just different expression of the same God. That's the same thing that exists in Africa. But somebody is like somebody deciding to declare that Christianity is a polytheist religion because they worship Mary, they worship the Holy Spirit, they worship the different saints uh, on, on different continents. Then they have sacred places, um, worship places in different countries. That's what it is. So it seems to be a very emotional topic, um, and I can you can see the rest of my uh, question actually in the chat. Um, but I am just referring to um, African researchers like Nwaga, um and how they're using terminology. So it almost sounds like using the term minor god um is considered by you to be derogatory that's uh, where the that's where the mistakes um, start we should use divinity or use deity and so then i think all the african scholars who are writing on this topic you probably want them to be very careful also yeah because our languages do not make the confusion of a big god with big g and a small god with small g we have distinct names to refer to different uh, spirits. Okay. More Any questions? other question? Yeah, we have like a minute. Um, if there are more questions or comments about this. Yeah, somebody asking if minor gods, I don't like the word, but because it's written there, I will read it like this. If minor gods would be analogous to sense in the Catholic religion. Yes, that's what it would be. Minor gods would be uh, in Christianity, uh, the different saints, and then Mary, and every other person that is worshipped in the uh, religious, uh, in the Catholic system, would be the equivalent of our divinities that Europeans call minor gods. So uh, you're asking, you're saying praying through the saints in Catholicism, you would have to. It's the same thing as praying through the divinities in the African traditions. Okay, exactly. Um, I will also point out, Cleve has just commented 
that there are many conservative Protestants who think that Roman Catholics are polytheists because exactly. of the veneration of Mary and other saints. So it's completely perspective. What yeah. you're but in our African context, European did that to justify the civilizing mission to say that Africans should abandon the, the multitude of minor gods and worship a Christian god. Mm -hmm without realizing that they also have these minor gods that they don't call minor gods. Right. Okay. Um, great. Thank you. I, we could probably talk about this for another couple hours. I'm sorry we have to leave it there. Um, but thank you so much for this presentation. Extremely interesting. So now uh, let's just take a minute and we're going to switch to our business meeting.